Right, given that we're going to Vietnam for MSI, I decided to have a shot at making some pho. Apparently it's pretty easy, it tastes really good, and most importantly, it's super safe. What? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. What? <laughs> this is fine. Honestly, this is... This is just fine. All part of the plan. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another episode of Picks to Watch. The mid-season invitational is upon us and it's the first big international event of the year where the best teams from around the world will battle in Vietnam for the coveted MSI trophy. With a new tournament comes new picks, so without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Our first champ rises from the depths to return to pro play, but not in the fashion that you might expect. It's Nautilus in the mid lane. The new mid lane behemoth has risen in popularity thanks to his naturally tanky nature, along with the surprising anchor full of damage that he brings. This comes from his exceptionally high AP ratios being paired up with the Aftershock Keystone. While Nautilus scales well, he is no sea snail in the early game. His high wave clear allows him to wade through any wave, to then pair up with his jungler and hunt down those who owe the bilge water tide. On top of that, his incredible amount of utility will set up any foe for his teammates to quickly bring down. You'll find yourself in the deep end when going up against Nautilus in teamfights. The CC helps lock down even backline targets, and the surprising burst means no carry is safe from his vengeance. As mentioned before, the core keystone is Aftershock, and typical builds include an early protobelt into a Morello and followed by Zonyas. The HP and cooldown reduction contribute a lot to his kit, and even this small amount of AP is enough to threaten any opponent. One must be aware though. Due to Norlis's naturally high wave clear, he can often push his lane and leave himself exposed to ganks. Do not stray too far into open waters, or you may sink from the ocean's weight. Our next champion is the light at the end of the tunnel. That will melt. It's Lux Support! This crown's guard has taken her place as a guardian down in the bot lane. This is thanks to Aftershock providing what it often does, more survivability. Assuming one can bind their opponents, this rune makes the squishy mage, well, not so squishy while still being able to dish out damage. In lane, this overly positive companion provides assistance in wave clear through the use of her Lucent Singularity, along with poking down her opposition. As the game progresses, she becomes the ultimate double rainbow, by providing both effective offense and defense. Once she has completed her core atomization, she provides a lot of defensive utility to her teammates, while still being able to bind, blind, and blow away her opponents. Speaking of itemization, she typically starts by prioritizing Frostfang, Follow this up with the Athenes and Holy Grail and Arden Sensor. The synergy with these items and her prismatic barrier will shine bright enough to light up anyone's day. Remember that this little light, while tankier with Aftershock, still lacks in mobility and is reliant on landing skill shots. Be aware of your positioning and be patient, or run the risk of your light being snuffed down. The final champion on the list is a curious creature with an identity crisis, it's Nico. This shapeshifter has recently been spotted running the Glacial Augment Rune. This provides potent slows to make it easier for Nico to land her skill shots, thus germinating her plants of damage. During the laning phase, she provides strong poke and effective wave clear into most matchups thanks to the combo of her Tangle Barbs and Blooming Burst. Her colors truly shine during teamfights. Glacial Augment further empowers the already insane crown control that she can bring in a 5v5 situation from both her Tangle Barbs and Pop Blossom. It's also important not to forget her burst. Thanks to her high AP ratios and large area of effect abilities, Nico will be quick to make her enemies behave. Last but not least, don't forget about Nico's flexibility. She can be played top, mid, or bot, confusing her enemies before she even enters the game. The typical build includes a Hextech GLP and Twin Shadows to act as a way to proc the Glacial Augment. This can then be followed up with a Morella Nomicon, Zonyas, or Death Cap, depending on your preference. Remember that while Nico is slippery, she still lacks a form of escape and is rather squishy. Be careful of your positioning or your show ma could go everywhere, which honestly just makes a massive mess. That does it for this episode of Picks to Watch. If there are any fun or interesting champions that you think could make their way to the mid-season invitational, be sure to go into the comment section below and let me know. The tournament will be kicking off on May the 1st and you won't want to miss it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. I was just cutting some onions and how everything is on fire! How is everything on fire? Why is this on fire? Why am I on fire? Oh my god, there's so much fire!